I'm gonna run you through a quick series of my warm up, what I usually do before working out. It is total body, head to toe type of warm up. So arm sweep with the wall, hand out, I'm right against the wall. I'm gonna go to my end range of motion. So as far back as I can, I'm not letting my body twist. I'm gonna bring that palm down and I'm gonna come all the way around. This is gonna warm up that shoulder joint. End range of motion, palm is out. Bring that palm down, come all the way around. I'm trying to keep my upper half straight forward. And I'll typically do, say, five per side. After that, I go to a dynamic T-arm. Hands together. Do not fish tail with this. You're gonna bring one arm back, across. My hips are staying forward. Center, center, back, across, center, center. Back, cross, center, center, back, across, center, center. I usually do five per side if uh, shoulders and chest area is more tight. I'm gonna do more. I'm gonna try to get more rotation, more thoracic movement of that spine. The other one I will do is an inchworm. Everyone knows what that is, or should know what that is. I am gonna bend or hinge, push my hips back. I'm not letting my knees really bend on this one, so I wanna get that the hamstrings warmed up, and all of these are gonna be movement based. I'm gonna walk my hands out to a plank position, and then I'm gonna walk them back. Come up nice and tall every single row. Walk them out, plank position, maybe pause for a second, walk them back, and come all the way up. Pull the shirts out. <laughs> so maybe five, eight of them, whatever you do, you're warming up that body, getting it ready for the coming exercises. After that, I am going to bring one knee down. So I'm down in that kneeling position. I'm gonna bring my heel in alignment with my knee. So I wanna try to open up 90 degrees. If I'm not getting a pull on that inner thigh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk my foot out just a little bit. And I'm gonna keep my upper half more forward. I'm gonna dip down. I'm getting a really, really strong, good pull on my inner thigh and then I'm gonna rock back. So I'm gonna dip down, good pull on that inner thigh, and rock back. I'm gonna do at least eight of these per side. So the next one that I will go into after that kneeling adductor dip is knees underneath the hip, ankles underneath the knee. I'm gonna bring opposite hand down to the floor. This hand, inside hand of the leg, is gonna come up towards that ceiling I'm gonna pause a second, bring it down to the inside of that leg. Do not go to the outside, inside of that leg. This hand is gonna rotate up. Now you can follow with my head, typically, that's what you wanna do, and then bring it down. I'm gonna do eight per side. Um, so after that, then I would obviously switch to the other side, same thing, same type of movement. If I'm not doing this, I'm usually doing the world's greatest stretch, which covers all those basics of warming up. After that, I'm gonna lie down on my back, press feet shoulder width apart, press my back in, push through those, the feet, the heels, squeeze the glutes. So I don't wanna bring my hips way up here. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Literally, I can't get my glutes firing properly like I should. And then most people are just arching their back and they're hurting their back. Or I'm hurting my back, at least when I'm trying to demonstrate that. So back is pressed in, squeeze your butt, come up nice and tall. So nice straight line typically, bring it back down. Press that back in, drive up. I will do 12 of these. Sometimes if I wanna get my glutes firing more, say I'm doing deadlifts or squats for the day, I will put my feet together like a frog and keep them together. Maybe I'll put a band around the knees if I wanna make it more challenging and I'm gonna drive my hips up. The next exercise that I will do, actually if I wanna get more thoracic rotation, a lot of people have back pain. You want strong glutes and a strong core to help prevent back pain. So I will go to a side-lying 90-90 stretch to get some more rotation through the thoracic spine. So I'm lying on my side, 
My knees are in alignment with my hips. My ankles are in alignment with my knees. Hands are together. I'm gonna relax my head down. I'm gonna exhale, open up. I'm following my hand with my head. You'd be surprised how many people cannot do this stretch. So open up. This feels so good on that pack area if that's tight, and then the middle part of your spine. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring it back. Deep breath in. Exhale. Try to open up. Deep breath in. Exhale. Try to open up. Depending on the day and how I feel, I'll do eight to 12 per side. The other one, you usually wanna get that. We'll just sit here and literally hold a plank. If you can hold a plank for a minute, two minutes, what are you actually really doing? You need to advance your basic plank, okay? You want your core firing, you wanna make it challenging. So say, I wanna get my core firing. Wrists right under those shoulders. I'm gonna go up into a plank position. Think of bringing my rib cage to my hip bone, tailbone's tucked under and I'm gonna do an alternating tap, or a pledge plank. Pledge plank, I'm gonna bring my hands together, make it harder yet, and then I'm gonna tap my shoulders. Alternate. I wanna get my core burning and working before I start lifting. And sometimes I do, I'll be honest, I do skip this one, just because usually I can get my core firing before the exercises. If I wanna add, more stretches to this, I will do a piriformis stretch. The box or the chair that you're sitting on should be hip height. Your knees should not be way up here, otherwise you're not stretching where you should. You want nice straight line, parallel to the floor, ankles under the knees, this box is a little short. Ankle is gonna go over the knee, other ankle underneath the knee. You're sitting nice and tall, deep breath in, Exhale, gently push down. Deep breath in. Exhale, gently push down. This is a piriformis stretch. 